Hello, I'm Hong Kai Zhang from the EdScience team at Pandora Media, a part of Series XI. This is a presentation for the 2020 Advances with Field Experiments Conference, and I will talk about a recent experiment aiming to learn the conversion list of our in-app marketing channel. Our findings suggest short-term outcomes could be misleading about long-term ones, and I'm excited to share these findings with you. So many of you might have the Pandora app on your phone and like the free service we provide. But we also have paid tiers from $5 per month Pandora Plus to $10 a month Pandora Premium that supports all on-demand features. To tell ad supported free tier listeners about our paid tiers, we utilize full screen messages that looks like this screenshot on the left. We have programmed the app to trigger these messages at certain interactions, and users can take immediate conversions with the upgrade button. Most listeners are eligible for a one month free trial, unless they have used that recently, in which case they can choose to start subscription immediately. Many listeners have converted this way since we introduced these in app messages, but we would like to learn how many of them are incremental. So starting in May 2018, we randomly selected a small group of listeners to receive a suppression treatment. So they have not received these messages since then. We want to compare these listeners to the rest of the Pandora users and expect to see a loss of conversions to paid tiers. We want to use this as a measure of the causal effect of these marketing messages. So we first analyzed the experiment just after two months. The outcome was very significant and strong. The top graph shows a lot of revenue from subscriptions. In the first month, we were already seeing a steady loss of sub from listeners who were not eligible for trials. Fewer of them started subscription immediately without the marketing messages. In the second month, we had additional loss of subscriptions from fewer listeners who had started their one month trial in the first month and converted into a subscription after trial. If we were to extrapolate based on the two-month outcome, we would project a daily loss rate of subs and call that the effect of AI messages. We could further compute the value of each incremental subs by the expected lifetime profit of a new subscription and put a dollar sign on these messages. However, we were quite surprised a few months later. Instead of the projected linear trend, we actually saw loss of subs stabilized for both platforms after four to six months. Now here's the function. If we were to evaluate our in app messages using the short-term outcome, we would be way overstating their importance. So why is this the case? Well, maybe the in app messages were mostly reminding rather than persuading listeners about upgrade. Would-be subscribers who had their in app messages turned off would most likely subscribe later anyway because we have other communication channels and it's not that hard to find the subscription button in the menu. So the net effect of these messages were to make some trials or subs happen a few months earlier. And the steady state effect on total subscription is just the number of subs we could move forward in a few months. The loss of ongoing trials gave a strong piece of evidence consistent with our theory. In the first month, we were losing trial starts at a very linear rate. After a month, lots of ongoing trials stabilized because mechanically, listeners can only stay in trials for at most a month. These are all pretty normal. But eventually, after four to six months, the loss in ongoing trials have shrunk to around zero. So the message had no long-term impact on listeners starting trials. A great explanation is that in the long run, trials affected by the suppression of marketing messages just all shifted later than a few months. So at any time point, a similar number of trial starts would happen. If our stories are correct, once we switch these messages back on for our treatment group, we should observe more conversions because there should be more listeners who are waiting to be reminded. That's indeed the case, but for sake of time, not shown here. To summarize, our data has shown a real life case where short-term conversion lift is not indicative of long-term performance, especially for marketing channels that primarily act as reminders. For firms to optimize these marketing channels, the value of each incremental conversions measured from short-term experiments 
should be discounted properly. If a long-term experiment is not feasible or the firm needs to make decisions faster, we suggest a prediction model might be useful. For example, if a model can predict the listener would convert in three months, an immediate conversion should be worth just three months of revenue rather than years. Such prediction models actually are often important components of lifetime value models widely used in the industry. So we might already have the right tool if we carefully evaluate marketing channels with a reliable lifetime value model. That's all. Thank you.